Most new woodworkers kind of prefer using the metal hand planes to get started because the idea of using wheels and levers just seems simpler to them. That couldn't be further from the case. Wooden hand planes are extremely easy to adjust. All you need to do is take advantage of wedges and Newton's laws. Let me explain. The first hand plane I built was this coffin smoother. I took a class from Roy at, up at Roy Underhills to make it, and it is a phenomenal plane. I really enjoy using it, and I come back to it time and time again. But this design is, is a little finicky, and it's this kind of setup that I think kind of turns a lot of people off of adjusting it. And it all comes down to the blade. It's an extremely good blade as far as the steel design, but it is straight. So, when you place that in your plane, all the holding action happens with this wedge right here. So, even though you, you kind of have to get it a little bit too tight to really lock this blade in for heavy use, because all the force is coming back this way and it wants to push the blade up. So, when you get this too tight, it makes adjusting the blade a little bit easier. The old timing guys, they always had tapered blades. They were thicker down here and they would pound them out flat this way. The Japanese style, same way. And that is because if you have two wedges working against each other, they lock each other together so you don't have to have as much pressure on the wooden, wooden wedge. Now the wooden plate I use the most is one of the Krenov styles I built. I built a lot of these and sold some online. And it uses a hock blade. And if you understand a hock blade, basically it is a straight blade. It's dead flat. And, you know, I, I love Ron Hock. He makes a great product. And, but him saying that he doesn't have a tapered iron isn't quite the truth. Because this iron uses a chip breaker. And that chip breaker has a bend to it. It's a slight bend, but it is a slight bend, which makes it thicker here than it is back here. And that is what creates that wedging action, which makes this plane not only a little bit easier to adjust, but it holds its adjustment longer. What makes it easier to adjust is if you do not have to put that much pressure on the wedge. The wedging action itself will hold it. It's just a few slight wraps, and I'm all set to go. This is adjustable. In fact, if I really pushed hard, I can move it with my fingers, as you can see. But that is all the pressure I need to, for it to hold it down. I initial set up, I drop it down on the, my bench, and I just slightly push that wedge in. And it'll hold just fine. Now, to make adjustments, all we need to do is take into account Newton's laws. Now, to paraphrase, uh, Newton basically said, Something in motion will stay in motion unless a force acts against it, or something at rest will stay at rest unless a force acts against it. Now, a hand plane is basically three moving parts. You got the blade, you got the wedge, and you got the block. The block being the heaviest, but these will move independent of each other. So right now, it is at rest. And if I start planning with it, I notice it's a little bit heavy on this side. Now the top of the blade is important on these things because you got weight up high and it's kind of anchored down below. So if somehow you can bump it so that the blade will tilt, the top of this blade will come over this way, it will take less pressure on that side. So one way to adjust it, the reason why a lot of hand blades are locked off the side is you can simply tap it. Another way is if I were to tap the body of the plane, the blade will stay and move over a little bit. Very simple. And after you adjust it, a slight tap on the wedge just to make sure it's still anchored. And then I test it out. Now I'm taking a full width shaving right there. Easy adjustment. If you want to make it go deeper, obviously you can just tap right here. But if you want to make a micro adjustment, you can also tap on the front. And because it's pushing down, I don't have to really touch the wedge yet. And now, I'm taking a thicker shaving. If I want to make it pop back out a little bit, you can tap a little bit on the back. Readjust the wedge. And now it's probably not taking a shaving at all. Very easy to adjust. So if you're new to working, 
don't be afraid of a wooden hand plane. You can get them at a great value out there. A lot of times the steel is some of the best out there. You can make your own fairly simply. Just buy the blade, build the body. And just a little bit of practice. We're talking a few minutes and you can grasp the idea of how to adjust them. Uh, by the way, I really like these cheap rubber and uh, silicon or nylon mallets. Use the nylon on the blades and the rubber on the wood. They just work great. Best adjustment hammer I know of. So y'all be safe and have fun. So for today's bonus, I want to talk to you about Brian Havens and his YouTube channel. If you are kind of curious about wood turning, what it takes to get involved in it, what skills you need, or you're a really experienced turner who might want to get rid of some of your bad habits or understand why certain things are happening a certain way, go visit M Mr. Havens' channel. Uh, it's just under his name. He doesn't have that many subscribers, but he has a great content out there. They are long form content. Go watch some of his tool specific videos or technique specific videos. I believe he is one of the best wood turning educators on the web right now. And the reason why I say that one is when you are done watching one of his videos, not only will you see the proper techniques and understand how to do stuff, but you will understand the whys of the situation. Why does a blade interact with the wood a certain way? Why do certain bad things happen when you do certain things? How to avoid those bad things and why those techniques get the best results. I mean, it is, he really go, does go dive deep and gives you a great education. Go check it out. You will really learn a lot.